Hey what's up guys, it's Darius, and this is Living with the LG G4. I figured since there are a ton of reviews already out there, plus I'm about two months late, I would do a video on how it is living with the G4, sort of a long term review. I've used it as my daily driver for two months now and I wanted to share with you guys what I like and what I don't like about it. Starting with my least favorite part, the build. It is very similar to the G3, which is not bad because it had a nice design, but LG has made some nice and also some not so nice changes. They have increased the bezel size so now it's harder to use with one hand, but they added a slight curve to it which makes the feel on the hand great. Also there are no buttons on the sides, they're located in famous LG style on the back. It's really funny because when I hand the phone to someone else, nobody can ever find the buttons. I also thought it was weird at first, but after maybe a week or two, I got used to it. Now I really like it because they're nicely textured and placed exactly where my finger rests. Also there are some cool shortcuts where I double tap the volume down button to launch the camera for example. Bottom line is, if you're worried about the button placement like I was, then give it a try, you will get used to it. Now it's almost second nature and I actually reach for buttons on the back on other devices. Otherwise LG did change the back a little. Now you have the choice between a diamond textured plastic one or leather back for $50 more. For the first one and a half months maybe I used the plastic back which felt good but the durability was terrible. It got a lot of scratches on the back so I decided to pick up the black leather back. I thought it was going to feel a little more premium and I'm not a huge fan of the stitching in the middle but it's easier to find the buttons now and also the durability is much better. The great thing still is that the back and battery are still removable and there's a micro SD card slot which by the way accepts cards up to 2 terabytes just in case you need a little extra storage right? With all the other manufacturers getting rid of that, the G4 really is your only good option if you're looking for those features. One thing I did not like about the design was the bad placement of the speaker. The speaker is loud and clear but the placement on the back is not ideal and you easily cover it when holding the device in landscape mode. Overall, I like the design and the build is by no means bad, but it's not as premium or luxurious as other flagship and I feel like in 2015 it should be. Now one thing that impressed me a lot is the display. It has a 5.5 inch Quad HD IPS screen with Quantum Dot technology, not to be confused with Quantum Dots in TVs. It doesn't give the wow factor like with the S6, but it's an accurate and just amazing display, sharing first place of the best display on any smartphone out there with the S6. Considering it having such a large display, it's fairly one-handable. It's not as good as with a G3, but better than most devices with a 5.5 inch screen. Specs wise, it features an optimized Snapdragon 808 chip, because the A10 chip has some overheating issues. At first, I was a little concerned about the performance, because it's only a 6 core processor, but it turned out to be no problem at all. And paired with 3GB of RAM, it performs really well. There is however the occasional lag when opening the app drawer sometimes, for example, but these minor stutters are mostly due to software issues. Actually, you know what? Let's talk about the software. It runs Android 5.1 straight out of the box, and I think I haven't even received an update at all. Now, I'm the guy who likes stock Android, but I also appreciate and like features from other UIs. LG's UX 4.0 is definitely a heavy skin, but it did perform surprisingly well. There's some material design elements, but the rest really is LG's creation. But like the build, the software is extremely similar to the one found on the G3. But again, that's not a bad thing. Yes, it has a lot of features, maybe even up to the point where it becomes bloatware, and it's not exactly pretty, but it's very customizable and has some really awesome features built in. My favorites include a resizable keyboard, being able to move the cursor with a spacebar, and being able to set the screen timeout with one tap in the quick settings. Smart bulleting is also pretty cool and makes some nice suggestions, it's trying to be like Google Now and it gives you some information on for example when a number called you often then it suggests that you save it to your contacts or when an app drains a lot of battery it tells you and you're able to close the app but if you don't like it it can also be disabled. Also I can check the time and my notifications without turning the screen on which is cool. There are also some nice smart settings where I can set Spotify to open when I plug in my headphones for example. There's also a nice split screen mode, customizable icons and color coded folders. One thing that annoyed me and I saw that many other people complain about it as well is a settings app. It's just terrible and you can't find anything. But what many people don't know is that you can easily change it to the normal list look. I'm even still finding new features throughout the UI like being able to play music on Bluetooth and via headphones simultaneously. 
and it even shows a live weather animation on the lock screen, like how cool is that? And also features like knock code and knock on are still there. So overall, I like the UI, but it's not much different than on the G3. The thing I like the most about the G4 is obviously the camera. It has a 16 megapixel shooter with OIS on the back, it is f1.8, has a color spectrum sensor and laser autofocus. I'm not going to talk much about it because you're probably sick of all the G4 camera videos already, but in case you're interested I'll have a full camera comparison in the description down below, so go check that out. Basically, the camera is awesome. It's very accurate and colors look good. Sometimes it overexposes just a tiny bit, but dynamic range was impressive and images just overall look amazing and crisp. The laser autofocus was fast, but not as fast as I expected it to be. One issue that I did find was that it tries to over sharpen the pictures too much and the result were some artifacts and places which actually should be out of focus, but that's just nitpicking. In case you're more into photography, there's also a manual mode with DSLR-like controls. Low light was also good due to it being f1.8, but it wasn't awesome. One thing that was bad was a 4K video. The image quality is good, and I even shot my S6 review on the G4, but the autofocus is terrible and it tries to stabilize the video too much, so it warps and the result is bad. And in case you're into selfies, the 8 megapixel front facing camera is also good and it even has some nice gestures to take a selfie. Overall, this is probably the best camera on any smartphone out there right now, but the bad 4K video needs to be fixed with a software update. Battery life was decent on the G3, but now on the G4 it's pretty good, and it's still the same 3000mAh battery. For me it wasn't as good as many reviewers say it is, but considering it has a Quad HD screen, the battery life was good. With normal usage it lasted me a full day, with heavy or very heavy usage, not really, but that's more or less normal. I got an average of 3-5 to five hours of screen on time depending on the usage. Standby time was great, and it sadly doesn't come with wireless charging, it does however come with quick charging, but sadly my G4 doesn't have it. And in case your battery dies and you can't charge your phone, you can also just pop in another battery. Even though I don't have a second battery, I still love that feature. It's no secret that LG didn't change much with the G4, and it's more of an incremental update like with the HTC One M9, but it works for LG because the G3 was such a good phone already. In conclusion, I really enjoyed the G4 as my daily driver, and it has held up really well so far. Only thing I didn't like was the durability of the plastic bag and the 4K video which can be fixed with a software update. Apart from that, the build is decent, and it comes with expandable storage, and the display and camera are one of the best. Performance was pretty good, and I like the software which has some nice features, and while battery life wasn't awesome, it was pretty good, plus the battery is removable. I can really recommend the G4 to basically anybody who can handle a larger phone, I guess, and you also should be able to get used to the button placement. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please drop me a like down below, comment if you have any feedback, follow me on Twitter and Periscope, I'm at TechWilly on both of them, and don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one, bye!